and uh, the weather outside really reminds me of my data Facebook instrument. <laughs> the amount of my heart is 104. <laughs> anyway, uh, green green, uh, very different. And uh, what I'm <coughs> talking about today is uh, uh, recent uh, progress in uh, <coughs> physics and technology of oxide based ballistic uh, switching memory and or RAM in short. And probably uh, many people from industry will ask the question, is this really useful? <laughs> we know that it's interesting, but uh, whether it is important. And uh, at the same time, uh, those uh, industrial uh, uh, community which are uh, inter interacting with us always ask us, OK, this is uh, potentially very, very uh, useful and important. <coughs> Only if we understand what's the mechanism, they will just keep telling us more in depth in physics understanding. Therefore, some of the uh, my folk may, may go into maybe too much uh, physics oriented, but I hope that you will still enjoy it. Uh, this is a very uh, simple uh, way of uh, what is uh, available beyond CMOS memory, such as flash memory or DRAM and Western. One is the uh, SPT uh, memory, which is really depending upon uh, <coughs> spin dependent tunneling, and then uh, the on off or one or zero is very good. Uh, program this soft magnet uh, polarization <coughs> and up or down and then you have more current flowing or less current flowing. And then the other one, the uh, next one is uh, phase chain memory, which consists of uh, some phase chain materials. Uh, at, and then if you increase the temperature, and then at a certain point it will actually melt. And then depending upon whether you could quickly melt or uh, stay just below the amazing temperature <coughs> and then uh, slowly uh, cool it down and then it's uh, more conductive or less conductive. And then our lab, that's what I'm uh, going to discuss, having a top electrode and a top bottom electrode uh, and in between is metal oxide such as titanium dioxide, carbon oxide, carbon oxide, Etc. Etc. And it does have uh, option ions and also, also option vacancies. And then I will describe the behavior and many other uh, effects on this. The last one is conductive leak memory. This is uh, solid electrolyte, such as silver sulfide or copper sulfide or cadmium sulfide, etc. Et and then basically metal ions just moving around. Therefore, applying the bias and then uh, positive ions goes into one side and then negative ions go to the other side. And positive ions mostly is the metal ions. It's more like a nanoscale uh, plating. And then once a metal filament, let's say, starts from here and then finally almost meeting the other electrode and then it's on. And then uh, reversing the bias. Go to box state. And uh, <coughs> this is another beautiful picture, but uh, basically, uh, when, when you. Let's uh, 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 I expect. <laughs> but anyway, horizontal axis, let's say this is a bias uh, voltage. Here is zero, and this is positive or negative. And then this is uh, the, uh, the uh, current going through this metal uh, oxide metal structure. And in this case, you start from here, and then you apply the bias, but nothing happens until such point. And then it will uh, become conductive. And then you go back to zero, and then the ne next time it's still conductive, and then beyond some point and then it goes back to off 
across the table. And then, therefore, um, just staying in this polarity, you can switch on and off. And then if you use the uh, other type of the axis, which is the magnifier, <coughs> and then make it on, and then the next cycle is going up, and then go back to off. Therefore, it just go right there. <coughs> Therefore, uh, one uh, polarity is going up, there will be probably in four stations. On the other hand, this one, it stuck uh, normally like a conductive, and then it's going up, and then go back down to uh, off state. And then you come back, and then going to negative bias, and then it's going back to on. And therefore, this is uh, more of a multi uh, curve. It's just characteristic uh, of the KJ of that memory. Because of the simple structure compared to such as SDD, which has almost uh, 90 million layers of uh, ultra thin uh, <coughs> inch paper, this is just uh, some inch paper sandwich by two layers. So therefore, there are a lot of uh, interest in this. And then this is from uh, IBM Bureau ISSCC. And this is uh, sort of compiled by a student of uh, Professor Philip Wong at Stanford. We were very close to the other. And uh, <coughs> those are materials, nickel oxide, copper oxide, uh, titanium nitride uh, oxide, tantalum, hafnium, etc., etc., etc. And, uh, then, and then, and then, of course, this is a two-dimensional, two you also two-dimensional structure and geometry and switching from it, unipolar or bipolar, and structure, one transistor and one register. This is a typical uh, <coughs> LA configuration. And this is a cell area in uh, two microns. And then speed, uh, program speed, and DCT voltage, how much volt will be needed. And then DCT current. And uh, high resistance state and low resistance <coughs> Typically, it can, but of course, uh, we really like to have like 1,000 or even higher. And also, how many times you can program on and off, uh, 10 to 6 times or 600 or etc. and retention. Therefore, really, uh, depending upon which uh, material and the which structure, you can have four kinds of uh, combination. If you just look at the highest speed, it uh, switches uh, as fast as 300 feet per second. And uh, ratio is more than 1,000. And the other is this 10 to this 10. It is really great. But at the same time, uh, it requires a little uh, bit higher voltage. And it's continuous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, therefore, overall, so many uh, materials are nearly tried. At the same time, everybody really wants to understand what's behind the things. And uh, this is uh, <coughs> our run as compared to conductive bridge um, phase change STD memory uh, with respect to like the right speed of the function and right time. Therefore, very fast. Uh, memory was to be somehow here. That is <coughs> mostly uh, STT memory. And then R1 is also here. And and then some distribution for if you uh, say increase the <coughs> lifetime and then the right energy is more. But of course in the term uh, retention characteristic can be better. But uh, there's a very clear correlation. And this is the same area of the horizontal axis, namely when you make the device structure smaller and smaller, how much you can uh, consume, uh, you can use to consume programming uh, for this memory, namely programming uh, energy and frequency loss. And uh, <coughs> this is a phase change memory, and this is TT memory, and the other one is really distributed somewhere. Therefore, it does 
this may be uh, taken as a say, opportunity of, say, depending on which kind of materials you choose, and then it can be as fast as uh, SPT memory and even smaller than this. And uh, you don't care programming uh, energy, and so that is not normal in this case. You can have a uh, whole variety of uh, uh, variations. And by the way, this is a equivalent compact diameter. Therefore, so far, the uh, smallest layers are the sum of between uh, 10 uh, square nanometer. And uh, in the bigger landscape of memory, and then recently uh, published at a lot of ICT structure by S660, and, and also the other side, which is John Kerry of Japan. But uh, this, and the arm is here, 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 and there also here. And then CD arm is like here, yeah, it's still, I mean, except for this one, it's still an eye phase. And patient memory is uh, like here. And then uh, speaking memory, and then NAND is like here. So you, you can see where the, uh, say, the good application of the SPT memory can be, which is uh, really this uh, smaller capacity uh, that requires higher speed and then unlimited endurance. And then some other uh, cases, such as here, and including this uh, uh, the theory. Uh, <coughs> so uh, if I just very simplify what uh, those, uh, say, uh, data can tell us is that the size of this uh, less than 10 nanometer by 10 nanometer and then programming voltage is less than two volts. Programming current is less than one micron here, yeah, and some of them could be uh, top number is 0.2 nanometer here, yeah. and programming time is 10 nanoseconds to 300 picoseconds, and then all ratio, some uh, about 1,000, and then some is uh, almost medium. And the endurance wise is 10 to 12. Just recently, it said 10 to the 14 meter mass radius. And the tension is of uh, more than 10 years, I think, at EGC, and demonstrated by bias because it's really negative. And then there are sort of uh, more like a hand and dragon <laughs> fruit kind of com combined together with like one, this kind of thing needs to go out. And so it's not that intelligent. But in general, programming current, if you want to reduce, and then programming current will increase. And programming current, also the, uh, in that case, home ratio is coming down. And then if you further uh, reduce the programming current, then the ratio comes down. And the programming current, again, going down, and the endurance seems to be uh, getting better, but that's still a question mark. Now, what I like to uh, discuss from uh, now on is what's behind. Uh, like a titanium dioxide or half a million oxide or aluminum oxide, uh, this is a simplified picture of uh, uh, the oxygen, and this is the titanium atom, and then red is oxygen. Therefore, here is a mixing. Uh, oxygen uh, position, which is oxygen vacancy. And the, similarly, you have this, this, and this, this, and then like here. And uh, this is uh, the only initial calculation by using DFT and uh, <coughs> bus, bus code. And uh, then this is the uh, so called uh, beta. Uh, chart for the electron charge distribution. Therefore, if this is uh, the electro electrons on this uh, 
uh, titania, most of you have here from uh, Soto Ovala in uh, wavelength, uh, waves uh, functions flare because of the vacancy. And then you can see uh, there's a continuous uh, uh, electron density along this side direction. And, and then in this case, uh, <coughs> shape is a little different, but uh, basically those are the possible current paths. And large number of slides like this. And uh, it's, of course, depends upon which crystal orientation you take. And uh, most of the case, such a thing field is uh, amorphous. Therefore, you just uh, conceptually understand once you take one option out from uh, uh, transcendental uh, offsite and then he uh, he orbits um, uh, metal or stuff uh, uh, overlapping together, which will create a conductive pass. And that also, uh, whether vacancy is neutral or charged uh, plus one or charged plus two, depends upon the position of the metal or the uh, initiators. Therefore, like here, and then what axis is the formation energy of vacancy. Therefore, if it is smaller and then easier to make uh, uh, vacancy, and then if it is higher, then it's more, diff more difficult. Therefore, neutral vacancy is uh, more difficult to happen as compared to uh, uh, positive one charged uh, vacancy, yes. and even uh, uh, double uh, plus charge vacancy is easier to make. Therefore, this uh, calculation can be easily <coughs> uh, predict what you will be having is such a uh, vacancy plus plus. And, and also, uh, someone may say, OK, understood. But uh, having vacancy in order of uh, structure or order way may be less uh, stable than a vacancy is just randomly distributed. So we need uh, that kind of calculations. And <coughs> for the energy like here and like London and 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 also the uh, those order uh, vacancy array versus London, it depends upon the uh, carry injection from the electrode. And then uh, it will go in this form cohesion and isolation. Cohesion and isolation. Therefore, uh, when you apply the bias to the gate, <coughs> and then uh, this becomes more stable energetically. And then if you reverse the polarity, and then this is at lower energy of formation, which is uh, this is more stable. Therefore, it's it's really a bi stable depending upon the uh, the carrier injection, which actually controls the thing very well. <coughs> Therefore, after understanding uh, this kind of behavior of vacancies, and, and then we can uh, internalize what can happen inside of this uh, tiny material, such as uh, typically three to five nanometers that thick, and then uh, five to six nanometers in diameter. It's really much cheaper than any, uh, much smaller than any of the uh, known active semiconductor device. The first thing is oxygen vacancy randomly distributed. And this is a uh, pleasure to use. Therefore, if you have a perfect crystal, a perfect amorphous material, perfect stoichiometry, nothing happens. But uh, in, in reality, the nature actually allows you to have uh, some number of vacancy in existence under equilibrium. So, but uh, normally it is randomly distributed. And then if you apply uh, uh, some electric field, and then, then that will be formed by charge injection, and then you can decide 
a Fitz Alanya or other Fitzman in the United States. And then uh, some small atomic conductive channel may be created. It's not from top to the bottom immediately. Here, one tiny filament created, and here tiny filament created, but the applied bias is constant. That means once here the conductive bias, and then the electric field right here, the electric field will be go up. Therefore, that uh, promotes further creation of tiny nanofilament. And then finally, uh, after having all those tiny stuff, and then there's a population path, which is same as the uh, breakdown of uh, the SiO2. Uh, that's population theory can apply. And, uh, and then atomistic uh, <coughs> channel becoming more macroscopic, observable uh, conductive paths. And once it's almost touching to the uh, the other side of the vector. That's probably thin enough to have tunnel, light tunnel kind of stuff going. And that is still in the whole state. Therefore, if I use a sometimes cartoon here, yeah, then this is the, the first initial state where a uh, yellow stuff are the uh, vacancy uh, randomly distributed. And then you apply the bias. And then maybe here is a tiny conductive stuff created. And then right here or right here. And then finally, it's uh, if you look at the macroscopic uh, population path, and then electrons will start flowing like this. Too. And then it broke further. And then, uh, if you reverse the bias or just uh, apply more current, and then geoheating will uh, will change the balance, and then oxygen will be coming in here, and then uh, you combine, and then it, it go back to uh, mutually isolated small piece of stuff. Uh, and then this is a very very repeatable and also and then now uh, the challenge is which is uh, there are several factors which I like to discuss. The first thing is scalability. Because uh, if you cannot scale down small enough and then it's no use it, even if, even though it's interesting but it's not important. Uh, except for some very, very specific uh, application which I don't know. And also the uniformity or reliability, that is related to manufacturer reality. So it's another important uh, thing which we need to know. And, and then how you can actually uh, configure the array structure and then what the uh, pros and cons of that. Uh, and then most of the uh, recent research is really to experimentally pursue uh, first, vertical scaling, how thin the metal oxide barrier can be, and at the same time, uh, uh, physics based theoretical study of how much theoretically we can go, and then at the end, whether those are consistent to each other or something is missing. And uh, this is uh, uh, from IMEC uh, appealing uh, the idea. Uh, abstract 2011. They have about 10 nanometer by 10 nanometer in their photo. Uh, this is a sort of horizontal structure. And then this uh, uh, is one of our students. And having half in oxide here, and then pineapple, this is the uh, uh, electrode, and then this is another electrode. Therefore, this is metal oxide. Uh, metal uh, structure. And uh, this one is about the length scale-wise here is a 10 nanometer, so it's about 10 nanometer. And, uh, <coughs> and here is uh, 1 nanometer by 3 nanometer. This is uh, uh, K3, I don't remember uh, which uh, one of 
Sofia Asani meninggal sedih. And uh, <coughs> uh, this is uh, Dan's work uh, in front of San Mumong. <coughs> and he uh, measured the uh, sub 10 nanometer thick uh, alum. And self thick rise is pretty clean. And also, uh, endurance characteristic is pretty good. Uh, there are some uh, earlier phase uh, jumping up, but overall it's uh, pretty good. And uh, this is a uh, detection. Now, <coughs> whether that is reasonable and uh, how thin we can go, this uh, the result calculation done by my group of students. And uh, structure-wise, there's a tiny nitride and tiny nitride, and this was six millimeter. And the thickness is, in this case, one nanometer, and here's uh, two nanometer, and here's three nanometer. What we uh, <coughs> did is uh, to do the first DFT uh, RBD uh, scale simulation uh, to see the uh, electron density and distribution. And, uh, in this case, certainly, uh, on state wise, uh, enough uh, overlap right here. And then this is <coughs> in that case, only probably challenged going through the tunneling. And then make, making this stick thicker, the same thing happened. Uh, this is conductive already, and this and that edge is tunneling. And then after that, we applied non-equilibrium Green's function to actually calculate the transport. Is this Mo modeling data or real? Oh, this is modeling. Well, I certainly wish to be able to see this. <laughs> I was wondering modeling. what you used. <laughs> well, nowadays, modeling is so good or almost uh, giving us a uh, kind of <laughs> illusion for this is real. But we'll never know. And uh, this is, uh, oh, sorry, I, I just uh, uh, scale down the figure. Therefore, you just uh, look at this uh, line on the uh, those plot and then forget about all the other lines. And they get off state and get on, uh, on state and off state. And thickness is one arm, two arm, three arm. So it's pretty good uh, characteristic. No kind of unexpected supply for on state. And all state is like this. And that clearly indicates that uh, this is the only on state is clearly only conduction. And all state is uh, non linear ID. <coughs> such as a uh, short key or group and those kind of mechanisms. And uh, then we also calculated resistance uh, and also thickness. And then right here, <coughs> like the offset thickness, if that is one nanometer, and the distance is about uh, 100 uh, mega ohms. And, and then here, uh, ohm ratio is, there is about 100, well, maybe 1,000, and then it's the higher and higher. Therefore, uh, <coughs> this is. Uh, Good sort of guidance for experiment of now this is experiment of and here is a two nanometer it's a five nanometer five nanometer and then almost surprisingly five nanometer characteristic and two nanometer characteristic there's not much difference because uh, on state is purely governed by the uh, tunneling at, at the uh, near the uh, electro interface. Therefore, no matter in between, it's longer or shorter, that should be about safe. And then, theoretically speaking, and then experiments are also here, uh, showing some consistency. And uh, <coughs> the other important thing is uh, so called variability, because that is important for you to design DRD or therapy memory. And Interestingly, 
five nanometer and two nanometer, even two nanometer spectra, uh, which is e exactly opposite strength of any kinds of transistor characteristics. They, when they, when you scale down the transistor, normally why are you getting worse and worse? In this case, getting worse and better and better. Now, uh, induction of form, uh, forming voltage and also locking effect and so forth, what I like to say. <coughs> this is uh, another way to have a wide layer outline. Remember that uh, the switching takes place in, in medium, but at the same time, you have one basic assumption, which is at the beginning, you have enough number of vacancies. And otherwise, uh, you cannot turn it on, or you could turn it on, but uh, you cannot get uh, enough conductance. Therefore, sometimes uh, uh, people try to have uh, in, uh, intentionally make like oxygen poor uh, metal attached on other uh, metal oxide, and then to get down number of uh, uh, oxygen vacancy to start with. And in this case, this is the time that's on 12 nanometer and you get 25, and then here's the 10 nanometer, then therefore this portion of thickness is the uh, switching thickness, which is uh, reasonably thin. And uh, uh, here's approximately 10 nanometer kind of range of the device for 4 nanometer hardening of that material and 2.5 nanometer or 10 1.5 nanometer hardening of titanium oxide and uh, here's the current distribution and distribution and uh, this is the signal of this stuff and as compared to this uh, with this one uh, uh, sort of variability wise uh, this convention, namely, uh, uh, this is strictly variant, and this provides oxygen vacancy to And uh, the similar kind of comparison continues for nanometer, and then this is a double layer. And uh, here's a uh, intention, and here's a endurance cycle. And there is some kind of trend that uh, the window is getting a little narrower here, but we have no idea why. Then uh, some uh, idea is, okay, what if we intentionally go with some uh, element into, let's say, hardening oxide or titanium oxide or dot. And then this is aluminum dot, or here is the silicon dot, zirconium dot while this is done dot. And then uh, here is a hand down dot, tungsten dot, and it can equal dot. And you may realize, okay, this is a dot, and they get a filament. And putting aluminum here, and then filament is disrupted, having silicon the same, and zirconium, not much. And then hand down, okay, and then tungsten. Therefore, in the nickel, it's sort of uh, uh, not disrupted. Therefore, the protein can change the characteristic of the uh, switching. And then if you translate that into vacancy formation energy, uh, then here the <coughs> strontium, strontium, aluminum, and yttrium, and this is, uh, it's called a P3, uh, and because it takes the electron out. And here is the titanium, silicon, zirconium, hardening. Those, and including hand mm -hmm. wouldn't change much. And then here, uh, and other ones. Therefore, depending upon what kind of uh, formation energy you want to put down, which if you relate to the uh, retention characteristic and programming characteristic, you can, you can make uh, such uh, change the sort of control in the same way as uh, you go uh, say from the Japanese Western group, three or five impurities. And uh, this is, uh, that, that, the biggest one is 
calculations. And those are expected. And this is the single kind of calculation. Uh, what changes the number of dogans per the one dogan or two dogans and so forth. Therefore, the bottom line is, except for this, this uh, seems a uh, little bit singular, but experimental results are very much consistent, uh, consistent with the uh, RBGs, RBGs index. Now, uh, we started understanding many things, and uh, part of a requirement from the uh, from industry is to stack, uh, if you remember the, uh, the first video which I showed at the basic calculation, you apply bias, and then it goes up to one state, and then coming down, and then coming down, and coming down. But uh, the first, uh, action, zero to conductive state uh, needs to be done, which is called as a forming. And forming voltage is a little higher than programming voltage, uh, which uh, some applications really don't like it. Therefore, we are working on how we can possibly eliminate the need for a forming. And then from the, uh, the uh, physics point of view, that is translated into how you can uh, <coughs> not stacking density of uh, vacancies in the structure. And uh, uh, <coughs> first, in, in this area, we started doing the uh, uh, experimental uh, try, and then using aluminum oxide, and then we go to the nitrogen. And then, interestingly, first, Set, second set, the third set, this is from home state to home state. Uh, first state is state, and the second, uh, third, it's about the same. That means there is no need for homing. So homing is now sort of deleted. But at the same time, you might ask, okay, what, a, what about other characteristics? And here is a similar to uh, probability of uh, uh, set and reset. And it's sort of reasonable, and the instant price uh, that's pretty uh, uh, stable against number of switching cycles, so endurance, right? And then retention wise, it's also pretty good. And uh, other goal <coughs> which we did is uh, hydrogen. And this is an experimental work uh, published by Sun 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 Jiang Chen. Uh, and this is a uh, ordinary structure that doesn't have any oxide. And this one is doped with hydrogen. And then here is the low resistance state and high resistance state. And if you look at distribution, by some reason, if you dope with hydrogen, the uh, Fluctuation is much more. And then we did a lot of our research applications. And uh, <coughs> basically, uh, once you have a conductive channel created, and hydrogen comes in, and the hydrogen is stable if, uh, uh, when it is sitting in vacancy site. And then that will create mean electrons localized again. Therefore, having hydrogen in, and then off-state resistance goes up a little bit, and then on-state resistance goes down. But uh, because of the control number of such sites being in the random distribution, or random fluctuation is pretty small. So that's also very nicely consistent with experimental and RBC uh, simulation. And go, now <coughs> go forward to look into once they reasonably, quite reasonably understand the mechanism to based upon the real physics principle, not the uh, uh, adjustable empirical model. And then uh, to actually construct the other structure. And before doing that, here's R1 and CD1 again, uh, plotted the size for the sphere. And 
sunt uh, atât în apără de pe Sfinea Frumos Română, dar pe Ilegea Vit, sau în Sfinea, în The White Atlas, și o mulțumesc. And, uh, and and also how you program and then that's how you depend. And normally when you want to measure ID characteristics, it's probably like uh, using uh, ESP. And but at the same time, if you do that, the programming community itself already changed the memory characteristics. Therefore, uh, If you do that with a short pulse versus DC, there are some uh, interesting <coughs> difference showing up. And then uh, that actually created the thought about, okay, let's use the uh, little pulse time to measure the characteristics. And uh, here's the pulse number, and we get the resistance. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, this is uh, experimental data for uh, different uh, voltage and then pass with this, this part of NR second. And then this is a uh, simulation and this is, those are experimental. Therefore, it does follow uh, fairly well with what uh, we, we sort of imagine about what's going on inside. And then DC is okay to most of the case, but at the same time, uh, we cannot just take the DC characteristics as the uh, characteristics which you, when you actually make a memory search, uh, the uh, uh, accessing or write or read at very high speed. And, and then also, This uh, also indicates the possibility of multi-level uh, memory. And we are now looking into uh, neuromorphic kind of applications by utilizing this. Now, go back to a more uh, fundamental <coughs> array structure. One simple way is having one right line here and a deep right line here. And in between, you have uh, this two switching memory right here. And then this is the selection design. This is probably standard configuration, which you can use either uh, doing polar switching and then or by polar switching. And, and uh, but at the same time, the drawback is you need to have a uh, selection register at uh, each uh, point. Therefore, It would be very nice if you can simplify the structure, having just only uh, <coughs> um, uh, elements, but not the uh, <coughs> selection register. And one immediate thing is just make this kind of array. And, uh, and then, of course, you can make it very small, and also you can easily stack. And, and then go up is if on distance and over distance ratio is very, very high. And then, if this is on, and then others are not selected, and then it doesn't matter because the current le leading to this, this, this is almost negligible. But if it is only 1,000, then you have, uh, let's say, 1,000 uh, by 1,000 kind of array. And then, uh, such uh, <coughs> uh, leading current is really uh, non negligible. And then, therefore, some uh, thinking is to have more nonlinearity in uh, uh, the other switching itself. In other words, it's a steep threshold and then goes up like this. And then uh, you can uh, you can sort of assume that within this kind of range that. Uh, works almost by itself uh, a selection device. And that's uh, now uh, going on, and it's, uh, it's that is the super hot uh, area. At the same time, there are many uh, 
companies trying to start in previous power. There's uh, Samsung, there's uh, Amazon, and there's uh, IMAX, and this is uh, power importer sample. And in this case, this is the MSL. Uh, cross section is gazo metal, gazo metal, gazo metal, and gazo metal. And this is a switching device. So it's sort of uh, analogous to uh, three dimensional flash memory. But uh, flash memory still does require a transistor, but this, this doesn't require a transistor. <coughs> and then by starting that uh, multiple layers, you know, uh, we could have such uh, three dimensional uh, uh, layers. And this is just a preliminary uh, structure of what if we have a uh, vertical structure. And then this is, this layer is uh, carbon monoxide, and here's a carbon monoxide, here's a carbon Therefore, this area is metal oxide and metal structure. That's one example. And then in this case, we have two layers. And then you just uh, stack uh, how many layers, uh, whatever you wants to have. And uh, this is the uh, switching characteristics, which <laughs> almost unexpectedly much better than we sort of uh, assumed. And uh, set, and set or reset, uh, okay, so then uh, uh, changing from off state to out, on state to off state, and then yet off state to on state. And that is uh, set and reset. And here's a cell in first layer, and this is uh, in second layer, and so forth. Therefore, and then these are both normal layers, so much like a three uh, layers. And then characteristics of each layer are almost the same. And this is uh, uh, the plot of Tumor uh, Detroit. Therefore, we, we are now much more optimistic than before. And uh, similarly, this is the uh, endurance data. And this, this is already uh, tends to be a cycle. And then this is a retention. And of course, this is just our first data. And, and hope that there is uh, much more uh, improvement. So if I summarize, what we understand right now is recent process is the most energy consuming process because you need to create ordinary uh, order structure. And reset, uh, sorry, order structure to be disruptive, uh, which is the combination of electric field and uh, field heating. And, and then also the reset current is almost linearly proportional to set current. That is smaller set uh, compliance resulting in smaller reset current. And then of course how much can we reduce power by vertical scaling? That's a important thing. Therefore if we, we uh, make the uh, reset current very small and then still stuck, that's probably the idea. And low resistance state is determined by set time compliance and since that's dependent on device cross sectional area. Because this is a Therefore, no matter device area is this big or non internal time, it's, it's a one film. And high resistance state is inversely proportional to device cross because this is a uniform leakage. Therefore, if diameter is bigger, more leakage can. And charge injection and traffic determine some dynamic stability of vacant system and distribution. That's making random state be more stable or uh, all that uh, state be more uh, stable. So it's, uh, it's quite reasonable. And also various structures such, such as switching layer, vacant resourcing layer. For this vacancy sourcing layer serves as providing the vacancy, enough vacancy in the region. 
and then beyond classic failure to scale very thing. So to summarize, uh, this is progressing understanding of race to and very easy. And, and also scale it up to 200 x which we actually demonstrated. And what I use the last picture is also demonstrated. And now what's left is extended endurance to like a 10 to 15 or 16. And then you can easily play uh, like a basic demand. So that's so simple structure. But uh, that is a big technical challenge. And also select the is the same. Having transistor or having diode or distribute uh, element itself has a um, super energy like this it serves by itself. And my last slide is uh, how we do our sample. Uh, this is a big subject and then of course this was a project in one five or thousand and anything, anything. Therefore this is a uh, unity band with a uh, prototype one who is mostly uh, actual scaling, uh, experimental, and then some uh, uh, the, uh, compact model, uh, microscope model. And, and my group is going to sort of open uh, ultimate uh, limit and also deep in physics try to have a GCO or the GCO and try to understand so. And then uh, Professor Simon Wong, who is, uh, who is having a good uh, system in the background, so he does uh, go about the aspecture of things and uh, that kind of study. And then we kind of together and then my, well, several of my students are co advised by one of two Wong's and I'm also co-advising their past students. So that's uh, really orchestrated the effort. And uh, therefore, that we can cover a very large spectrum of activities. Mm -hmm. For this, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, support of industrial sponsors of them. And then PRI stands for Non-Revenant <coughs> Research Initiative and Sample. Uh, 100% funded by industry, and those are our two years before that, and I have a customized program in SRT and many fellowships here in the school, and of course, contribution in the PhD school. Thank you for your attention. Have you done any testing uh, for susceptibility to alpha? and neutron radiation at this one and also I want to understand to a stress testing for temperature. You know, maybe the that is a very, very timely question. Thank you, sir. Because uh, <laughs> the number one, this is not a one energy carrier device. Yeah. Therefore, like a single event offset thing is not a problem. Okay. But uh, total dose degradation, exactly. that may be potentially a problem. And that's where we are uh, already submitted in the proposal to this RC. <laughs> Joint with the University of Wisconsin, uh, Professor Leon Shohe, who is the expert of uh, radiation and. Uh, what about temperature uh, testing, stress testing? Temperature. Temperature. Uh, <coughs> we normally measure until the other time or something. Okay, I'll let you Yes. Wonderful to see you one more time to look at your lecture. It was a decent well, work. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, two thoughts came to my mind. One was your reset problem as to what happens to the structure at the reset time. And I was thinking whether a photoelectric uh, effect could be used to depopulate or populate vacancies. How is it? Photo? Basically, basically by radiation with uh, energy of some kind mm -hmm. to to uh, get a response in terms of conduction by making them activated. And that may shed some light on what is remaining in that column right. that you have. And maybe we can look at some. I think that is a really excellent question. And in fact, uh, if you <coughs> measure the, uh, the exact index 
the Philippines to the uh, Bielo Park and the Marshland Park. And by the in case of titanium dioxide, uh, on state and off state, it does have some uh, change in the impact in the Especially uh, one of my uh, students and then uh, uh, part of the member of the institution time will look at that may could be useful in the little slow, but the uh, optical has kind of switching instead of mechanical construction. How can that be then? Just one filament. How can it influence the effect of the Oh, the measurement itself, uh, we use the uh, single crystal uh, titanium dioxide. And then switching is more like a uniform switching. Have you uh, might comment on shaping your set and reset pulses as opposed to just total energy? Ah. And how that actually reacts with time localized time. heating, heat flow distribution. And in addition, have you looked at in cycle devices? Do you see any things comparable to say electromigration or segregation of, co of uh, concentrated elements? or even uh, density of voids versus mm -hmm. uniform structure. Yeah, we, we need some uh, calculation because especially when you want to disrupt the filament, but, and then that is really done by geo-reading. And the temperature we estimated is pretty high, almost 1,000 over, over wow. Fahrenheit even though it's a tiny, <coughs> and then that actually activates uh, the latency and then what and then keep flow reflected. And for that flow, <coughs> creates accelerated latency diffusion. And then of course oxygen coming in. And then the question is if uh, electric field goes up like in jet functions, and then the very, very, very uh, in the beginning, like uh, some people say, um, it's probably just going to get a great value for it. Mm -hmm. And then as you have a substantial uh, GOP, and then it will be uh, uh, some competition. Uh, and we actually uh, described that with uh, uh, the independent uh, division equation, some of the things that we call the electric field. That is more or more like a Boston plus uh, kind of continuity, and then the other is some heat diffusion, and then uh, vacancy diffusion. So it's a pretty uh, nonlinear equation. And I hired actually a uh, PhD in mathematics, and he actually gave up. So that's the thing. But one of my uh, students is sort of in a clinical way to. Estimated, but uh, certainly uh, your point, question is a valid point because shape of a program is house, but it is an uh, important thing. But that also highly depends upon which kind of alloy uh, size is because the plastic and uh, glass can be charged and so on. But that is a good uh, kind of area of the uh, alloy study. I have one more for you. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, all, all our studies at uh, earlier work, uh, there's a lot of hydrogen anemic. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, here results are looking <laughs> also promising. Right. So I, the mechanism of hydrogen role in the system, and maybe you can comment more on that as to if you've done it for different length of times or right. whatever. Actually, we did that uh, earlier, <coughs> and then now, uh, quite recently, one of my students came up with it, the same idea. Because, uh, but the whole point is hydrogen comes in and then uh, sitting into the cross region and side. That is the most stable. Right. But uh, to get hydrogen out from that to outside is about, I think, 44 EV or something. And then if hydrogen already creates like a hydroxyl OH, and then to break that OH 
from the food from something we are doing. So therefore that will most likely not happen. Therefore, hydrogen coming in and then what hydrogen behave is to again brutalize uh, the electron which before that spread or to shrink. And then control of amount of hydrogen, that's another example. In the beginning, I said, okay, don't even think about it. It's almost uh, impossible, but, uh, but, but still it's uh, smart. So you could poison the device with too much hydrogen, right? What? You could poison the device with too much hydrogen because it will permanently create it. Right. Yeah, I need a uh, very special case by using this chemical. We, uh, we poison the device uh, with 50% hydrogen for each bit, uh, 50% for they can be hydrogen, and then 100%. And then we have a, a clear trend of uh, conductivity going, going uh, down as we have 100% hydrogen for vacancy, which is reasonable than electron power shrinking. Do you think other noble gases or deuterium would have interesting effects? Such a viable uh, crystal Sure, yeah. I have not uh, tried. But uh, if, if, it's, if it doesn't create any kind of bond, and then if that stays in like a uh, interstitial site, yeah. and then maybe possibly get it just uh, strange. That is another uh, subject. Any other questions? Next time, let's take one more time.